Okay guys, welcome to this series ICT Scout Sniper Field Training Guide. Okay, let's look at what we're going to be covering in this presentation. We're going to be reviewing the previous episode's assignment, Price Reactions, and we're going to be looking at examples of price, uh, price reactions. We're going to go over a brief overview of smart money concepts, and we're going to be looking at interest rates, time frames, range the trend, and power three. Okay, we're going to be revealing the market maker. Okay, we're going to be looking at the ICT market maker buy model. And we're going to be looking at how dealers operate in support levels. And we're going to be looking at the ICT market maker sell model and how dealers operate in resistance levels. We're going to be looking at how market maker business model works in application. We're going to be looking at understanding how the market maker pairs orders and how orders stack around key levels. Okay, we're looking at exposing the mechanics of a price swing. And we're going to look at uh, more of the time and especially uh, working around the ICT kill zones. And we're going to be looking at the London kill zone specifically and the New York kill zone. We're going to be looking at how price is crucial to you in as far as knowing your key levels and how you are setting up your uh, opportunities to trade. And we're going to be giving you a homework assignment, stalking in the kill zone. Okay, folks, we are looking at the Euro USD. This is a daily chart. And when we're looking at reaction levels okay the ones I'm most interested in are obviously found in the higher time frames now you can go back to a monthly you can go back to a weekly chart and look for these types of levels as well but for the sake of this teaching series we're just going to focus on the intermediate term market and that's going to be divided at the daily and four hour and by hunting the reaction levels on this higher time frame daily chart and or the four hour chart, it really puts the odds in your favor based on the fact that the institutional level traders, that means the banks, the large funds and such, they are really watching these key levels. Now, we discussed in the first two episodes how we can look at support resistance and have you know high odds key resistance levels. Now, we're going to build on that in this episode here, but for now, while we're looking at this, I want to remind you that the last episode we talked about uh, the fiber being poised to trade lower. Okay, now I purposely waited a little while, not as long as I did to put the third episode out, but I wanted to wait a little while to allow the market to move lower based on that real time, if you want to call it that, in the recording that's time and date stamped on YouTube. The uh, the fiber was called to go lower. Now we're going to frame why that was the case now, okay, but I want to reiterate the fact that it was called lower beforehand, okay. So the concepts that we're going to employ and go over in this example are going to be um, beneficial to you going forward because it's the same type of thing you do over and over and over again, just, you know, on, on your own particular pair or it could be a stock market, you know, uh, stock or a commodity, whatever it is. Whatever vehicle or asset class that you find yourself a trader in, uh, we're delving in specifically the FX market here in this series. But it's important that you understand that my concepts are generic, okay? And when I say generic, it means they're not boring in the sense that uh, they're not useful. They're generic in the sense that they're universal, okay? They apply to every asset class minor little nuances that have to be taken into consideration but nonetheless they are applicable to every market uh, asset class so the homework assignment was to look for reaction levels okay mark them up on your chart and then watch what happens in the coming weeks around those particular price levels okay and we're going to do that now now i'm not going to beat it to death in terms of what uh reaction levels and what uh, support resistance levels we should have noted on our chart but if we were looking at this example here and this was real time in the time of you sitting down in the front of the charts or when I would be sitting in front of the charts this is how I would mark up my charts 
Okay, and we're just going to use the uh, the full horizontal line just to save time because I spent a lot of time uh, monkeying around with adjusting the the app uh, the, the right end of a trend line. Now I do like the trend lines because it makes it uh, neater when I'm drawing horizontal support and resistance. Now I don't like trend lines on a diagonal basis, so don't get me uh, misquoted here. I do not have faith in diagonal support and resistance, but I do have absolute faith in horizontal support and resistance as we have here. Now what I'm doing is I'm noting every swing high and swing low. That's relatively close. And we're going to use about 300 to 400 pip range from where we're trading at in this instance here. Now obviously you can see at the time of this recording the price is already down here but again I'm going to counsel you to go back to the recording and you'll know by watching it that we called this market going lower here. Okay, So we have this reaction high here. Okay, we have a swing high. Now what I'm noting again so you don't lose uh, lose yourself amongst my, uh, my banter here. I'm looking at times where candles have two higher candles on both sides. Okay, Not two higher on each side, but two higher candles on one side. In other words, you have a candle with a higher low on, on the left and a higher low on the right. Okay, and it, and I'm pointing at this probably <laughs> it's probably confusing because it's not what I'm showing you here. But uh, this is a Sunday candle, so you got to take that in consideration and blend that into this Monday. So you do have the uh, the the swing low here, basing this Monday candle and this uh, Thursday candle here, and, and this is a Friday candle. So you have that swing low. Okay, so we'll have that noted. Okay, and. We're going to use uh, this high here, okay? And you see this one here? Now I realize you're probably starting to think, "Well, wait a minute, this is getting really busy here," okay? But what I want to draw your attention to is the fact that we do have these levels turning the market on a daily time frame, okay? So if the market made its daily high or low there, okay, it's significant. Okay, now this is a moment where you pull out your pad. Major reaction levels, okay, occur around annual highs and lows. That means yearly high and low. Quarterly year high and low. In other words, every three months, okay, for instance, January, February, March, in that block of time calendar basis, okay, find the highest high and highest low. I'm sorry, highest high and lowest low in that time frame. Do the same thing for the second quarter. Okay, that being uh, April, May, June, and then July, August, September, and then October, November, December. So there's there's four quarters and blocks of three. Okay, because there's a quarterly shuffle that goes on. Okay, portfolio dressing and such, and you'll be able to see significant highs and lows. And we're not going to do that here. It's, it's this series is meant for you to get your sleeves rolled up and do some homework on your own. Okay, and you're going to learn by doing it. Okay, I'm, I'm leading you to the water, but it's up to you to drink, okay? You also have monthly highs and lows. Those are key, important reactionary levels, okay? And then you have weekly highs and lows, and you have intra-week highs and lows, okay? So in other words, once we get to like Wednesday, whatever the highest high and lowest low was at that time are influential, okay? And then you have your standard daily highs and lows, Okay, and here is one of the gold nuggets that you're going to get. Okay, whenever you see a swing high, okay, a swing high like this, okay, we have a candle here with a lower hide candle on the right of it and a lower hide candle on the left of it. Okay, this pattern is very, very strong, and the reason why it's so strong is because you have to take a couple elements out of that pattern. Okay, and we're going to start with the first candle here. This candle on the left of the swing high, okay, you want to note the high, the open, the low, and the close on this candle. You want to do the same thing for the highest candle in the three bar pattern, and you want to do the same thing to open, high, low, close values on that same basis, okay? And whenever you see a swing high on your daily time frame, you really, really want to have those data points. 
Now essentially we have the high here with this horizontal line and we essentially have the open we're here with this line okay but it was based on this candle here now we have to have the low I'm sorry the low here noted as well okay you can see that happening right there now I'm eyeballing it true but we can go down and uh, doctor it up when we get down to the lower time frames but here's what I want just just by clicking that like I did here I want you to take a look at what happened over here in these candles see the bodies they were having difficulty closing and opening far beyond that level okay something about these levels okay causes the marketplace to turn okay and we're going to talk more specifically about that phenomenon okay and another uh, smart money concept applied to um, where markets tend to to blast off and, and have you a, a trade opportunity presented to you and you can see things in advance uh, based on what I'm going to share in this episode here but I want to show you how sensitive these levels are and then obviously because we have this market uh, open on this candle here if you go over here look what you that you have a bounce right off of that uh, obviously we can see that the uh, the close of that candle and that swing high we were opening essentially near that same point went lower uh, the candle here was unable to make much move higher uh, we uh, fell short of it here uh, the body of the candle here as well okay so there's a lot of uh, insight that is gleaned by doing these uh, exercises but it's also a daily procedure okay but here's the cool thing once you have these levels noted okay these when they're when they're a, a lot of them like you see here this is when you take your data and you write it down on your pad okay and in that way when price trades to these levels okay or approaches these levels you'll have that in mind so, okay look this is a reactionary level based on the daily time frame so that way you don't have to have all these lines on your chart okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take our chart and we're going to drill down to a four hour basis okay and we're going to be just simply looking at uh, the the market from the standpoint of August 23rd Okay, and what I did was I just moved the uh, fixed chart position, and it's just a little difficult to see here, but uh, I will show you all that when I talk about setting up templates for uh, MT4 and how you can maneuver around. So we're going to do a four-hour chart. Okay, and here we are. We're essentially um, with these same levels noted. We move down into a four-hour basis. Okay, and what I'm just going to do is I'm going to scrub forward a little bit. Okay, and right about here is where we were talking about how the market was poised to trade lower. And I, I'll promise I'll get to the point of which we're going to explain why it was going to go lower. But uh, for now, I just want to just illustrate how the market eventually traded with these levels. Okay, now these levels were based on uh, key reaction levels on the daily time frame before the fact. So in other words, we're going to basically establish a point of which... Um, we'll delineate that with a vertical line here. We'll just say, beginning here, you know, we were expecting the market to go lower, and we're going to start watching and just going to study how price reacted to these levels going forward. Okay. And really, what you're doing is you're you're looking at how price moved, reacted, traded down to and up to resistance and support, how price worked specific levels broke down, found support at it, then broke lower, and moved around and gyrated, okay? Now, these levels are just simply established off of the daily time frame. Now, when you move to a four hour, okay, like we learned in the previous two episodes, when you break your market down from a daily to a four hour, the four hour is gonna have more dynamic support and resistance levels that were not as clearly discernible as were on the daily chart, okay? So, this level here, Okay, you would have on your chart as well, and you can see the price reactions uh, from there as, as well. And you have uh, this swing low. One could have that on your chart as well. And you can see how price uh, reacted around that as well. Okay, and now 
what we're going to do is we're going to move to a 15 minute basis and we're going to look at last week's trading. Okay, this is last week trading the Euro USD. This is a 15 minute time frame. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the vertical lines in, delineating the actual days. You have Monday's trading here, Tuesday's trading here, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday down here. Now we again we're calling the market lower, and you can see the market did in fact trade lower. We're gonna be looking at um, how price reacted intra week okay but we're going to talk about some things that haven't really been touched on if you've been following me for a while in great detail okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to be discussing the how the market itself, we're going to zoom out just one more tap just so you can get a feel for what has happened. The market traded lower up in these levels here where we were calling it lower and broke down rather aggressively. Okay, so you can see much more dynamic uh, view of how price had respected these support resistance lines that we arrived at on a daily time frame. Okay, so now Obviously, we can see in hindsight that it caused the market to turn at resistance and support. And once support was broken, eventually traded back to it, found it as resistance. Okay, we understand those central tenets to the marketplace and how technical analysis is generally perceived and or viewed in a hindsight basis. Okay, but how do we use these levels going forward? Okay, well, number one, unless you have these types of... Uh, price points okay or, or support resistance levels on a higher time frame there's absolutely zero reason to expect a trade to form okay again here's one of those notepad moments okay write this down and underline it several times you do not look for a trade or a trading pattern on your intraday charts unless it is trading at a higher time frame support resistance level okay or at a higher time frame reaction level that means the trade has to be formulated and framed around a level that you had already arrived at from the daily and or for our time frame. Okay. Now, here's a question for you, and you already know the answer to this, I'm sure. So, again, I'm not trying to browbeat anyone, but I'm telling you, I've done the same stuff. So, hopefully, you'll learn from it like I did, and you'll 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 stop the bleeding, and you'll start moving towards consistency. So, now looking at your own personal trading how many times daily weekly in the last few months or so how many times have you looked at a five minute chart or a one minute chart or maybe you know an hourly chart looking for a pattern a price pattern and then trying to uh, you know chase the market after you see it moving because you you didn't have the uh, the confidence to trust the pattern because there was nothing framing it on okay you just saw a pattern or similarity of what would be considered a price pattern and then reacted to it after the market started moving what you felt was a confidence booster in the favor that uh, you know the favorable direction the, the pattern was suggesting it would move and then all of a sudden saw the market turn on you even though that supposed price pattern was there it eventually turned on you has that happened to you I can tell you with grace surety if it hasn't and if you don't do these types of things it surely will Price patterns by themselves, you know, uh, you know, I'll speak harmonically, uh, Gartley's, uh, butterflies, bats, all those patterns, okay, that you hear banted about on the internet and or YouTube educational series or reviews or some quote unquote previews, uh, they may or may not be profitable. But if you don't have that pattern framed around a real reaction level, Okay, and again, we've talked about why the market reacts like it does, and when you see uh, market um, moves that are dynamic, okay, because 
It's the institutional sponsorship that takes the market up or down. Okay, retail traders are not going to do anything to this marketplace. We are participants that are hopefully like the fleas on the dog. Okay, we're on for the ride once in a while. We get a bite. Okay, but if we don't watch it, the dog will scratch us right off. So we are hopefully positioning ourselves at a time and place, really, in terms of price, where the market is highly sensitive to market reactions on the higher level trading entities like the banks, large funds, institutions. If those traders are participating in the marketplace at that time frame, okay, at that time of day, at that date, okay, at that price level, you are in a much better position, technically speaking, as a trader, than those that just simply go out and say, well, you know, the market's been going up for the last six days, so it's probably going to keep going up. So let me just go in here and buy it today. Okay, so I can tell you I know a lot of people that send me emails, and again, please, I'm only using this as an example, so don't let this be an impediment to you ever sending me emails or questions or comments or anything like that, but, it, you know, folks do these types of things, and here's this, here's another, uh, you know, um, disclosure. I did that same stuff, guys, okay, when I actually traded commodities, if the market was going screaming up, okay, and I would be watching it do it in the middle of the, the summertime during drought season and if the wheat market was going straight up it could be up for 19 days <laughs> and I'm like wow it's been going up let me just get in there and buy that okay and sometimes I was lucky and then other times I was not okay because I was chasing the market by having these levels predetermined based on the higher time frame you can sit on your hands and exercise that dreaded word patience okay because a lot of times I you know I, I talk about that and I stress the, the, the importance of having patience and submitting to time okay because if we're using these daily and four-hour charts it's going to take time for price to get to these particular price levels now why am I teaching this time frame well because most of you can't sit in front of your computers all day long and trade for a living as much as you aspire to do that you all have what responsibilities you have mortgage payments you have children you have spouses to take care of if you're wives you have you know husbands to deal with <laughs> so the bottom line is is you have a lot of responsibilities and very little time on your hands to be able to apply to analysis now sure you can go back and look at the hindsight and study intraday action like that and there's not certainly nothing wrong with that but for the most part by far and large majority of you are watching this all have nine to fives or similar that keeps you from having the time to sit in front of the charts and trade intraday. So, again, I'm teaching this time frame because it will allow those that have jobs to formulate trading ideas in your demo account to build confidence and understanding in technical analysis and still possibly take part of profitable uh, swings that the market entities push price up or down based on you know, these higher level uh, support and resistance levels. Now, again, we have a snapshot in front of us here. This is essentially a two and a half weeks worth of uh, price data. But again, these levels were noted prior to these price points up here. Okay, we were calling the market lower up in here, and the market has slid lower. Okay, to the tune of about, what is that? Let's get a good, good feel for what that price level is. We'll get about the middle of that consolidation. And the lowest low on last Friday comes in around 285 pips or so. Not bad, not bad for uh, you know a future um, perspective in terms of uh, uh, analysis. A lot, a lot of my uh, haters that uh, really are have no interest in learning this stuff, they just want to de derail and detract uh, folks that are out here doing this stuff uh, for free. I don't sell nothing. I just do it as a as a hobby. As you guys can see, it's been a, a a delay in my release of this uh, episode and that's another reason why I'll never sell anything because I really have a life and I'm not gonna uh, subject you guys to any kind of uh, payment okay and uh, you know selling things because number one I don't want the hassle Two, uh, I don't need your money and three I can't promise you I'm gonna have the free time to consistently give you what you would reasonably expect on a paid service so there are guys out there that have uh, you know services and some of them probably shouldn't be doing it. Then you have others out there that uh, you know, are doing it, and maybe they are you know worthwhile, and they have a, a, a you know a assistance to, to new traders. 
Uh, it's not up to me you know, to judge those individuals. I can just tell you that me personally, uh, in the form of a mentor, you get what you get and when you get it. I mean, I don't mean to be uh, ignorant about it, but uh, you know, like I said, I do have a, uh, a job of being a father, um, a husband, and uh, my life is interesting. And it, it many times pulls me in directions I really didn't plan on from uh, you know, the time I lay my head down to the time I wake up. A lot of things can happen in the ICT world, and uh, you know, I could be involved in things that uh, I hadn't planned on. And, and that's what this market can provide for you, a lot of freedom to do that very thing. I'm not locked into having to do any one thing or another. Um, the freedom to be able to say, you know what? Um, I've reached my goal. I don't ever have to go to my employment place anymore. Okay, whatever that is, you plug that in. If you're, you know, if you work at a uh, an industrial um, job, or if you're a truck driver, or if you're a mechanic, or if you're a doctor, or a nurse, you know, ice cream truck uh, guy. Uh, how about that, Huss? <laughs> Bottom line is, is y you have to uh, get to that point, and it doesn't happen overnight. So use these tools. Okay, to help frame your inner trader that will eventually come to fruition after you gain a level of confidence in yourself, firstly, that you can stick to the, the, the procedures, then trust the tools, and then when those two come together, then you find a level of consistency at your time of choosing, not when I say or another mentor and whatever uh, you know book that you buy suggests that you know you should go to live trading or, or full time trading you'll know it when you know it okay believe me you'll you, if you feel like you're rushing you probably are so don't don't get in a race to try to say well I'm quitting my job okay um I'm throwing out these little notes I have next to my uh, keyboard here because I I I've, I've been getting emails so I'm kind of tossing these little nuggets out in the midst of having these recordings so hopefully I'm answering your uh, your inquiries so now by looking at these two and a half weeks or such in price data we called the market lower back here okay so how would one reasonably expect to participate in the marketplace as price moves lower number one we have these price levels noted and again from this point in here these levels were on the chart they would be walking forward you would see price reacting real time at these price points okay again this is a 15 minute time frame so you would have smaller dealing range support resistance levels on these time frames as well but not as important as the daily and 4 hour time frames because those are where the large institutional traders are spent you know spending the majority of their time looking for value okay and which we're going to talk about that so now again we talked about how in the previous episode that uh, the market tends to make its high or low in the first few days of the week generally by Tuesday's London Open and at the very latest many times you'll find that Wednesday's London Open is like the last cusp of where the high or low if it's a down week the high would be formed but generally between Monday and Tuesday uh, you, you see it forming uh, the higher low and now with that going forward okay you can see that we did have the high form I think it just went above a few pips, maybe one or two pips here on Wednesday. So it came true as well here, moved lower. Okay, but then we moved into this week here. Okay, and it's kind of unique in a sense because if you've been watching the news, or you've been reading newspapers and such, uh, there's been some uh, saber rattling about uh, the U.S. potentially striking Syria. Uh, I'm not going to go on the political stance on, uh, you know, get on my soapbox about what we should or shouldn't do in regards to that, but it has caused a lot of uncertainty in terms of what is going to be, uh, you know, the outcome of all that, okay? And it's, it's really good in a sense because it gives me an opportunity to plug in something that otherwise, if it hadn't, hadn't been happening, I would just be talking about it conceptually. But now we're going to have a, a real-world example of what this implies when you deal in your analysis. When there's uncertainty, okay, when there's uncertainty in the marketplace or the, uh, the global economy, um, you know, arena, the participants get really, really spooked, okay? And what will happen is, the large institutional uh, traders, okay, many times will scale back their risk. Uh, they'll reduce their uh, position sizes 
or their new trades. Maybe they they were going to do a large uh, a block of orders to be a, an accumulation of, of a buy position. Maybe they're still bullish, but because of the uh, the global uh, stance against uh, you know this potential strike and the implications it may have on the markets, maybe they have reduced their overall exposure by saying, well, you know, we're going to buy it because we fundamentally fundamentally think it's going to go higher or lower okay um they just scale back that and that's something that you should do as well so what do i mean by that well it means number one scale back the level of trading leverage you're using because anything can happen in these types of environments okay but what will generally you'll see happening is, is there'll be a lot of range bound trading and spiky uh you know consolidation but there's still opportunity to trade in that environment. You just got to lower your expectation, slow down in terms of what you expect to see in terms of time, okay, and expect to spend a whole lot of time in the market moves, okay. Like, for instance, if, if one was a buyer here on Tuesday, you'd have to sit through a, a long period of time before we got into the New York Open on this day here, the uh, September 4th, before the, pro the price you know, released to the upside. Now, if one was a seller, okay, you'd have to rely more on these resistance levels, okay, and stick true to trading only at or very close to these levels, meaning that if the market environment suggests that it's a lot of uncertainty. Okay, there would be um, times where maybe the price moved up here off these uh, key resistance level and traded lower, and then gave a retracement, and maybe I would trade something away from that level. Okay, on a, a more uh, calmer global uh, arena. Okay, when there wasn't so much uncertainty because of uh, potentially war breaking out in the Middle East and the implications it has. I would not be willing to trade far away from these levels and, and continue to move lower, meaning that I would miss these little small little moves in here because I don't care about trading out here in this open space between this level here and this level here. I would be more inclined to be trading at these levels. Okay, and you can see when price gets these levels, the reaction that it has. Okay, and that's what you want to be focused on, focusing on the 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 impact of uh, these higher level time frame uh, support and resistance levels and applying that to your trading only trading when it gets to those particular levels and a, a confluence of other supporting and um, indicators whether it be uh, price indicators or economic indicators that come around in terms of uh, your economic calendar and hello have you been looking at that <laughs> you should be because those things are you know, very significant in terms of trading. You got to know what's coming down the pike, guys. So let's go in here and zoom in a little bit and go over what had transpired here. Okay. And we're going to use Friday, two Fridays ago. Okay. And we're going to use this price point here. Okay. We have a price move down, small little retracement, another move down. Okay, and then a retracement. Okay, so we had one leg, two legs, and then a retracement. Okay, and then another retrade to this particular level here at 132.20 level. On Monday, okay, we were still like obviously looking for a selling scenario because we were expecting lower prices based on a higher time frame idea that we're going to flesh out here. But we have a range high here to this range low. Okay, I'm going to show you. This is the range here, from the low to the high of that previous Friday. Okay, now why am I using these price points? Okay, well, whenever we start a new week, I like to use discernible price swings, and this is discernible. It's very clear, very distinct much in the same capacity this high down to this low is okay now you could have your level from this high to this low but I'm not expecting much of a retracement because we're overall expected bearish on a higher time frame so 
the likelihood of it retrading all the way up to these levels. Sure, it could, but I don't expect it. Okay, so I'm looking at price where we moved into this consolidation and we broke down. We're going to come right back to that same consolidation. Okay. Price comes right up into that 62 level and then trade it off. Okay. We're going to use this same high and this low here because this is a new swing, a price swing from this high to this low. It's a larger, more dominant price swing, whereas this is a small little short-term price swing and then a retracement. This is leg one and leg two together. Okay, so here's leg one and here's leg two. Now, if you look at the high down to that low formed here on Tuesday, we have this high and we have this low. See what we have here? Price coming right up to that sweet spot. Boom. Hit that right on Friday. I'm sorry, Thursday. And trade it lower. Moving into a low on Friday. Okay. So now, what was up here that caused this reaction? Okay. That's one of the uh, assignments I want you to look at. Go over your uh, economic calendar go over your your charts on a five minute basis on an hourly basis four hour and daily okay really hone in on this little area right here okay the breakdown in the fiber or your USD as we would commonly hear it referred to as uh, this was the actual high that was formed on uh, the fiber then we traded lower and right before that price high okay I want you to see something here see this low okay let's zoom out just one stage here's the high okay here's these lows that we were just talking about the market broke those right there okay when we see that that's generally a sign that this market wants to break down much in the same way you see it here okay it broke the low here and then tried to rally up and was a false swing and then gave up the ghost and went lower. Well, we have that same scenario here. Okay. And the reason why price was expected to break down here is if we go out to a daily chart real quick. See this old set of highs back here? The price went just above that, ran to the 134.50 figure mid-figure rather, and then <clears throat> traded lower. When we had this price pattern here, these are referred to as railroad tracks, okay? And I like to see these types of patterns because, number one, they're, they're pretty powerful in terms of uh, prognostication. You see that happen here? And price gave a very nice uh, retracement here. This is very tradable. Now, obviously, when you contrast it against something like this, where it rallies up like this, or the rally here, or the decline here, it doesn't look so dynamic. But if you were to look inside the range from this high to this low, we're looking at 168 pips. Would you just throw away the opportunity to make 168 pips? Certainly not, or at least you shouldn't. <laughs> so, again, dealing with these daily charts, there's a lot of pips, there's a lot of potential uh, setups that are available to one if you understand what you're looking for okay because we're looking at price at an old high here when prices run up through an old high but look at look at where the market had came from we come all the way up this low in the beginning of July and it was basically a one-sided market we very had very little retracements and it's kept driving higher and higher and higher now I got a lot of uh, lines on this chart but uh, I'm going to refrain from taking them off because I'm going to need them in a moment but we have this rally up makes a swing high then we rally up makes another swing high and we rally up makes a higher swing high okay whenever you see the moves like this keep pushing higher 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 into an old high these are areas of where heavy distribution is taking place now I, I learned a pattern called the three Indians pattern okay and it's basically uh, like a three drive uh, pattern where you got one high and higher high and another high 
okay um, it's a very common pattern it's been around forever and I can't even remember who really originated it um, Larry Williams did some discussion on it um, but I always just revert back to just uh, you know the street smarts book by uh, uh, Linda and Larry and uh, you can just Google them up on the uh, internet again the books street smarts and the pattern here you're seeing is the three Indians pattern it's a climax reversal pattern meaning that the price is driven up to an extreme and generally it's just right above an old high or into an old high and then you can reasonably expect to see price to trade off now I'm not suggesting please don't take this as this is the high of the euro and um, it's going to go down to hell okay that's not what I'm saying here okay what I'm saying is it's giving you a tradable reaction that's sizable okay and we're going to talk about where we would be reasonably expecting to see this market go lower okay based on this understanding here but looking at this high here when we ran through that and gave up the ghost on that candle right there that was the the, the fate sealer for me that we're probably looking to see this market blow out and go lower and then when the next candle here took out the lows prior to that rally okay that right there is a break in market structure that right there suggests that this market is now poised to trade lower so any rallies from this point on should be suspect in other words you selling t you selling into them as a, a mode of uh, trading so don't be buying into it and expecting to keep going higher now will it eventually sometimes do that certainly will okay because I'm not 100 percent but by far and large when you see these types of events happen it does give you an opportunity to trade short so let's go back down to a 15 minute time frame okay and here's that high here we were just discussing when it broke down we see the break below the lows prior to that last rally up okay so now here what we have is we have the range high to the low once these lows were taken out we have a shift in market structure now what does that mean? Well, it means that we have a low to high, a low to high, then we have a lower low prior to that rally. So we have a break in what would be considered market bullishness breaking down. Okay. Um, again, because I'm not a fan of support and resistance, I'm not going to draw... Um, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. I'm a very, very large uh, fan of support resistance. I'm just not a fan of uh, diagonal support resistance in the form of like trend lines. But if one was to draw a trend line like this, okay, one could say, okay, well, here we have a price point here. We have a price point here. Trend line breaks here, comes up, retest, goes through it just a little bit, and then it falls off. That's all fine and great, okay, but I've seen many times where these types of scenarios don't even have any impact whatsoever and just blows on through. Okay, so again, if you trust trend lines, go right ahead and use them. I'm not trying to disparage those that do. I'm just telling you, if you're looking for trend lines that on a diagonal support resistance basis with me, you're not going to find it. There's going to be, uh, you know, a drought because <laughs> I don't, I don't work with that. So we have this range here, this high and this low. Okay, and as price rallies on up, in here, price goes right up to that sweet spot. Okay. Here's your 70.5 level, unique to ICT. So here we have price reacting very nicely and then coming down, giving you several opportunities trading off of that 62% retracement level. See that? Price is having a very strong resistance around that price point. Okay. All of a sudden, market breaks down again. Okay. And we tar start taking out the lows here. And this low here, when that thing gives, it's all you know it's all over with and you can see that happening here the market participants drive it lower and it just didn't have any momentum whatsoever in terms of uh, trying to come back and we move lower and lower and lower so now once we have this break in mark structure and the price rallies up here okay what we would be doing is looking for areas of resistance or support breaking then turning resistance where we would time shorts okay we time shorts now let's add um, a, a couple examples here but we're going to apply okay we're going to apply some well, let's go back to the vertical lines here because we're going to imply the weak phenomenon that we like to look for 
uh, Tuesday and or Wednesday from the high of the week and you see that happening here okay but as price rallied up this is a suspect rally why because we had already broken down based on this low you know forming lower on uh, these lows here taken out and the rally up is suspect when we start to break lower we have these lows taken out it rallies up now we have a new range we have this high down to this low see that now look at what's happening here price is working within here's your 79 percent 70 and a half percent and 62 percent all this time price spent in that small little consolidation and then price broke down came back up broke down came back up broke down came back up broke down okay again we're looking at a 15 minute time frame now you could frame trades on that or if you really want to reduce risk okay you could zero in and go lower do a five minute chart okay and we're going to do that now we're going to work within the week of the seven what is that the 24th and the 30th so let's go down to a five minute and this is where price was consolidating all around that area and price breaks down here then rallies up we have a hold high here we have an old high here and old high here watch what we do here we're going to use this high here this is 7 GMT this is essentially the beginning of the European session and we're going to pull it down to the low prior to that rally up goes right to the sweet spot and this candle comes in at 1300 GMT that's New York open remember we were talking about how in the previous episodes where we could see uh, specific price moves unfold in the two largest uh, trading sessions that being London open and New York open those two sessions overlap but uniformly inside of individual London and New York there are particular price swings that take place and we're going to discuss that later on in this video but here's an opportunity that uh, one could get short on trading off of this resistance level that was noted in advance trades down off bounce off this support now notice how price sweeps this below it a little bit okay and then reacts when it bounces here okay not only is it bouncing here to give you a, a rally to sell into but if you're a scalper okay if you're a scalper see this low here and it rallies on up it spends a lot of time in here okay let's look at how much of a bounce that took place we're looking at about 35 pips or so of a bounce so if you're a scalper here's your higher time frame support level you have an old low back here this rally and then dips down okay it goes back to the same little consolidation market participants are, are going to be really sensitive to this area of interest in terms of uh, price data when price moves out of a consolidation and it eventually comes back down to it it's reasonable to expect another reaction now it doesn't mean it's going to go right to the moon okay but if you are bearish and if you're a scalper on a short term you could buy into this and if you're really nimble and I'm not suggesting you try to be but uh, one could do um, what I've done very little of in my trading history but I knew a few guys that are very nimble like this uh, they'll buy this then go short on a reversal and then ride the other way down um, I'm not that good I'm not claiming to be that good but I have seen it done um, uh, a couple years ago um, I was on a website forum and I shared a live uh, example of me doing that very thing and um, a reversal on a dime and it, it kind of like excited a lot of folks that were actually watching it live but uh, I can assure you that doesn't happen all the time and I just happen to be lucky on those one few rare instances where witnesses were were present <laughs> so here's an opportunity to be a seller here and that was on a Wednesday okay and we be looking for the market move lower into uh, Friday because the overall bearish tone sets that uh, that stage up uh, we have a resistance level here price is unable to go higher okay trades lower and then starts to rally up so what do you think would be here if you pulled your fib you got to use this high not here use the highest high around that level so here's a high 
and again we're really splitting hairs with this in terms of the five minute chart but you can see that it it, it does give uh, some quality setups and again if you look at this this is your uh, optimal trade entry and, I, and you'll have to zoom in on your own chart because I'm not going to do that here uh, I guess if I moved out this way a little bit you'll see a little bit better yeah 62 70 and a half and 79 percent is the actual high of the candle and uh, that happens to be around the Asian session so you could actually call it a very nice move in the Asian session which we're not going to be talking too much about in this video series really uh, relying more on the London Open and New York Open uh, sessions. Uh, we have a, a, a high here at 840 GMT and another high here at 1220. So we have a London Open swing high and we have a New York Open swing high. And the overall bearishness is again focused on because of the higher time frame. Any rallies you look to sell. So here's a high to a low. Put that on that low where it belongs. And price trades right up into the sweet spot, which is confer, uh, con confluence of uh, factors here. We have a, a higher level time frame support resistance level, that 132.67 level-ish. You can go around. Uh, you can round that to 132.70 or 132.60, small round number. And uh, the time of day that occurs is 12:15, and that's the New York Open. And then price moves lower, respectively. Then we have again price trading at this 132.39. We'll just call it 139. Uh, I'm sorry, 132.40 uh, level. It was rounded to a nice round number. Uh, we have this range here trading off of this resistance down to this resistance and then there's a retracement okay and pulling that range make sure we get our candles okay we have in here we have Asia making the high the actual high formed on uh, 130 GMT this candle here is the 910 GMT that's new I'm sorry London open uh, price breaks down a couple different uh, little micro rallies in here and then finally gave up the ghost at 1230 GMT which is New York open again trading right up into that 132.39 or 132.40 level and then really fell out of bed and again here, trading in the same direction intraday, uh, we have this resistance broken. I'm sorry, support broken, now resistance. And uh, this small little range, if you looked at the high and the low of that, you'll get another small little retracement for a London close continuation pattern going into the low of the day. We have... The high here in Asia, previous day's high and low. Okay, price comes down, rallies up into the 62% retracement level here, and it's confirmed by this same 3220 level, which is a nice level. It's 3220 in, uh, institutional level. We like to watch the 20 levels, and uh, an old low. Okay, and on this candle here, that is. 1040 GMT and then we have 945 GMT and we have 7 GMT so all during the European and London session uh, we have several opportunities to be a seller into old lows broken now resistance and then market moves lower where would be reasonably expected to see reach for this old low again we're looking for support resistance levels to aim and and look for uh, you know targets again same scenario here okay markets moving lower here's the opportunity you could use king off of that 131.90 level let's round that to a, a small round number uh, pull a fit from this high 
to that low, you'll get a nice uh, retracement. Okay, we're up to a sweet spot and sell off. And here, same th thing we could uh, use for continuation in the same direction intraday. If you use the FIB on that for the New York Open, you get right up in that sweet spot and optimal trade entry and trade lower intraday. Now, that's if you are a day trader. Okay, and there's 45 pips or so you know, laid at your feet using that as an example. Uh, eventually, the market bounces and trades up into a previous range. Now, we're, tra we're trading right into these resistance levels. But you see this high here? To this low? And here's leg one and then leg two. If we use the high down to that low, again, we're looking at market swings. Uh, the market's trading into the optimal trade entry, just fell short of the sweet spot, which actually comes right on top of that 3220 level, which is nice. I like seeing stuff like that. There's where you got your setup. So I kind of gave you your answer for your homework. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that, but sometimes that'll happen, guys. And there's your, uh, your retracement back into going into Friday. Okay, so that's what has happened since the last time we did our episode uh, two in this series and how the reactions and price levels are laid at your feet. They were in advance given to you how to find them, what was uh, you know, the trade direction and how to uh, you know, look for setups. Okay, um, this is what you do. You go through looking for support resistance levels and you only take opportunities when price gets to those levels and you look for price patterns around that same higher level time frame support resistance okay notice we did not put any five minute support resistance levels we did not put any 15 minute support resistance levels we didn't put an hourly support resistance level we only used the daily and the four hour the higher time frame those are your time frames where the institutional sponsorship is going to come in okay so hopefully this has been insightful to you again apply the tools in a demo account setting and build your confidence and you determine when it's safe for you to use live funds. Okay, we are looking at a 10 year T note daily chart. Okay, and I'm sure you're probably asking yourself, okay, well, when did we enter the commodity realm? <laughs> well, I started as a commodity trader and I learned from Larry Williams, one of my uh, first mentors, that the interest rate market was basically the market that control just about every market asset class there is. Uh, interest rates are the driving force whether you're a stock trader, whether you're a commodity trader, currency trader, oil trader, um, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, interest rates are the absolute underpinning of market dynamic moves up or down. It's going to be uh, more or less, it's going to be propelled by the uh, interest rate market. Now when we look at uh, 10, 10 year uh, T notes, there's one small little uh, extra I want to throw in here. I'm not breaking down my entire bond market analysis concept. Uh, it would be I could spend eight series uh, times eight videos. I mean, 64 videos, and still not scratch the surface on the uh, the elements of uh, interest rates and how one could utilize those in in trading. But I'm going to give you a, a real simple, basic framework where I'm sure it'll take a lot of ambiguity out of the marketplace and for you as an, uh, an analyst in your trading and be able to use it in a real world environment because I'm trying to avoid giving you information overload and I'm just giving you small components that will very easily and, and, and neatly uh, fit together and it'll allow you to have a better understanding of the macro economic uh, perspective which is essential whether you're a short term trader, swing trader, or even a day trader. We're going to be looking at the interest rate yields. Now, these are specifically going to be, uh, you know, the 10-year mark. Now, they can be shorter and longer term, but for FX purposes, the 10-year will be uh, sufficient. So let's take a look at a few examples on how we can draw this information from the Internet for free with no cost to you. Okay guys, we're going to look at some concepts utilizing 
the T note 10 year and we're going to be looking at some interest rate uh, concepts I'm going to give you some free resources that you can do this with it won't cost you a dime except for your internet connection alright just do a Google go to bar chart okay and you'll see barchart.com okay that's what you want you want to click on that okay when bar chart opens up like this what you're going to do is you're going to look over here and it's going to say select a commodity hit that little toggle window down and you're going to scroll down to the financial section here and you'll see 10 year T note click on that and it'll give you a few choices of contract months just use the highest month here okay and in this case is September okay when this window opens up I'm gonna go over here to customize chart click on that okay and what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna scroll down just a little bit and we're gonna do some changes to this and what we wanna do is, is you wanna be looking at daily nearest click on that and the reason why we want that is because it's going to show a continuous non break in the, in the contract uh, as you can see here if I scroll up you'll see these um, little spots on the chart here okay uh, you'll see an absence of that by using that that type of chart and we're going to go to a candlestick we're going to take all the volume off it's not essential for that here okay and we want to see at least a year's worth and we're going to click draw okay and what we have here is a daily chart of the 10-year T note okay and what I want to show you is there are means of discerning where the higher level tide okay Okay, and think in terms of um, you're a salmon. Okay, generally as a new trader, you're a salmon. You you want to swim against the current because if the market is going down, okay, it's probably not going to keep going down. Okay, it's going to go up eventually. Things you know ch tend to be contrary, and as a new trader, so you want to fight against that tide. Well, I can tell you, as a salmon, you know, the outcome of that is they have fun when they get to the top okay when they're right and they survive it but they eventually once that's done and they and they completed their task by getting there they all die a lot of people don't realize that but the salmon dies when it gets there so do you want to be the salmon okay do you want to swim with the tide okay and it's a kind of silly expression or example or analogy but it really communicates the necessity of doing things the easy way okay don't overcomplicate don't overcomplicate things and the, the surest way to start that way of thinking as a trader is where's the money flowing from is it flowing into or out of currencies okay and the essential question is, is how does one arrive at that answer well you have to look at a macro perspective okay and the way we look at it macro perspective is the interest rate market now the interest rate markets are the absolute center focal point of all uh, economic asset classes whether it be stocks commodities you know uh, currencies it, it doesn't matter the interest rate markets what gyrates and moves everything around you can argue with me all you want but I'm gonna tell you that's the case okay so if we understand the interest rate market we have everything laid at our feet we have the keys to everything you would ever want okay the kingdom okay so if you understand this you'll understand everything you'll need to know on a higher time frame premise okay so now uh, I'm not going to go into all of my bond work okay so we're just going to look at just the 10 year T note that's going to be sufficient for this teaching series but I promise you there are so many levels deeper that you can go into and uh, it's really not taught anywhere on the internet uh, my bond work is absolutely unique and I'm gonna blow my horn there's nothing like it out there so um, I've given a few little things about it in the past but uh, man there's so much more to it that helps discern 
um, what the interest rate markets are doing on an intraday basis, on a week-to-week -week basis, on a daily, if it's going to be up or down day, um, there's ways of looking at that seasonally. And, uh, man, it's, just, it's crazy how, uh, you know, rhythmic this interest rate market is. Now, with that understanding, okay, if we look at a 10-year T-note market, this is a chart of a daily futures contract of the 10-year T-note. If we see price, in this case, trade lower here, okay, what is that telling us? Well, there is an inverse relationship between the futures contract and the actual bond yield, okay? The yield that the 10-year note is uh, yielding is uh, actually, in this case here, is going up, okay? When the T-note futures contract is rallying as it does here, the yield would be declining. Vice versa, when we see the futures contract from the 10-year note trading lower, that means that the yield is going higher. When the 10-year uh, T-note is trading higher here, that means the bond yield for that 10-year note is going lower. Then we have a drop lower and sustain move lower. That means there's a sustain move higher in the bond yield. Now, that's all fine and great, but what does that really mean? Well, it means this. If you want to be a buyer of currencies, and we're going to stick to our equation of being the fiber or your USD, okay, that's what this teaching series is focused on. It really goes along you know, with the other majors too, but we're just going to use the euro. If the 10-year T-note is trading lower, like this, that means that the bond yield is going higher. Currencies are going to be chasing higher yield. So what does that mean? As the yields go up, as we're going to see in another chart and how you can get that information as well, as the yields are going higher, the currencies are going to chase that. Okay, And that means they're going to chase yield. What does that mean? That means while the 10-year note is trading lower, you want to be a buyer of currencies. Okay, Now, take a big step back. Now, go back to this price action here. If we see price trade lower and then rally up into a level of, of old support broken here is resistance. Keep on going over here. Now, this is now resistance, right? If you look at the high down to the low, we've essentially retraced back to what will be considered a deep enough optimal trade entry. I'm not going to put the FIB on here, but you can do that. You have to subscribe. I'm not going to key in my uh, my information for uh, barchart.com, but you can set up an account with this this website. It's free, absolutely free. It does not do anything, but require you to have a email address. Okay, and my advice is to to create an online email address that you use for all of your uh, your trading related things, and that way everything that gets spammed because you eventually will get spammed. I'm going to tell you that I have gotten. Um, Oh, I, I shouldn't say I've gotten, I should, I've received rather, um, some spam ever since I signed up to this service. But if that's the small consolation in, in terms of accessing free commodity charts that I like, um, this is you know, certainly one way of doing it. So uh, I don't work with the, um, the email address, you know, ICT at innercircletrader.com or my uh, Inner Circle Trader Gmail uh, account. I use the um, completely alien a means of uh, signing on to this this website and a few other ones that I like to use but uh, as price rate uh, rallies up into this area here we have an old level of resistance which is support here okay we could expect to see prices trade lower now what if we could have an x-ray view okay imagine if you had an x-ray machine or x-ray remember as a kid maybe you guys in the states know this uh, uh, growing up as a kid, they had these little things in the back of the comic book where it had uh, X-ray glasses. Okay, and of course, I was a sucker. And I spent my dollar twenty-five allowance and sent it in there, and I bought myself a pair of them. And when I opened it up, it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was just an optical illusion. It gives you the impression that you're seeing, you know, an X-ray view. But there is a way of looking at the market on interest rates. Okay, so you can see where the tide is changing and turning. Now we're going to come back to this chart, but for another uh, free resource, we're going to create 
another tab okay and we're gonna go to do a 10-year bond yield chart okay when you click on that you're gonna again look for in the list US generic government 10-year yield analysis okay when you see that just going to scroll down just a little bit you want to go and go to your chart here not a snapshot you want to go to chart okay and just do a year Okay, what we have here is the fluctuations of the actual yield, okay, of the 10-year treasury market. Now watch what happens. Let's go back to that 10-year Tino chart. Price made a high here in April, and then going into May, we made a higher high. You see that? Okay, then we made an ultimate high in the Tino market and traded lower. Let's go and you see a converse relationship here in the yield. Okay, here's that low and then a lower low in the yield. Again, thinking inversely here. Okay, all we did was have a mirror image of that happening here. Okay, and then there's been this rally up or sustained move in the bond yield. So as the bond market, uh, I'm sorry, the interest rate on the 10 year has been moving up okay that means that the currency markets are going to be looking to rally okay that means they're going to be looking to go higher so now as a higher level time frame institutional sponsorship minded trader it's like that's what we're trying to cultivate in you right now you want to be focusing the majority of your trading okay now here's one of those notepad moments when you want to risk the maximum amount of leverage that your personal risk appetite permits, okay, and let's put it out right now, do not risk more than the industry standard 2% per trade or maximum account exposure at any one time, okay, and we're going to say that that's the case here. You have the green light go to be risking 2% or whatever your maximum is in your demo account, Again, because this is for teaching purposes only and not giving you trade advice, you have to discern whether or not this is useful information to you. And if you trade on that with live funds, it's completely 100% your responsibility. You collect all the success and accolades. I don't want none of it. Okay. So by looking at this type of scenario, you could be a maximum risk trader as a buyer. Okay. And what does that also mean for being a, a short seller if you're an intraday trader? don't risk maximum okay because the higher level time frame tide is poised to be moving higher why because the yields are going up and eventually the currencies are going to try to snap up and chase after that yield okay so what does that mean well let's look at April and May time period in the euro Now, obviously, once you set these, once you open your charts up like this, you're going to be wanting to save them in your favorites tab. Okay, um, I have one for the euro, for the bond. I mean, I'm sorry, for the British pound, for the dollar index, and I have one for the 10-year T-note. Okay, here is a weekly because that's what I save. But uh, we're going to go down to a daily nearest and. Yeah, let's pull up nine months of it. And we're going to draw the chart. Okay, and I left the COT data on there. But, uh, yeah, you, you guys know me. I'm nuts about stuff like that. i got to get it off. It'll distract me. Okay, so I just took that off. And now what we're doing is, is we're looking at the, here's the April. And here's uh, May time frame where the euro did what? 
we made a low here, came down, made a low, traded higher, came down in July, ran out the lows here, but this right here was suspect. Why? Because the yields were going higher. Okay, so while we did trade down to these levels, okay, those that were watching my market reviews, okay, I, I discussed that the uh, British pound was poised to move higher as well, all in these same time periods, and it was the case. You can see it happening, unfolding here. So we saw, again, the, the fiber, your USD pair, traded higher, 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 and where to trade to? An old high. Blew it out just a little bit. But eventually now we're trading counter, okay, what the yield markets are suggesting, okay. So um, we could retrace a little bit deeper and try to uh, trade up and fill this area here. But the bottom line is, is ultimately these are the types of moves, okay, you want to be participating in, okay. Do you see the majority or lion's portion of the market moves are happening on the higher level time frame being a buyer okay very very sustained long uh, basically uh, you know intermediate term swings are on the upside okay now granted there's some profitability to be made going short there's nothing arguing against that here okay but what we're saying is, is if you want to be uh, directionally poised as a trader and only focusing on institutional level uh, direction Okay, this is one way of doing it. Okay, um, let's look at the bond yield chart again. Now, there is another opportunity to look behind the marketplace. Okay, we talked about this x ray view concept. I'm going to go to Google once again, and we're going to go and look at the 10 year. German bond yield. Okay, when you see that, you're going to go to, where are we at here? Sorry. German government bonds, and then here's it right here. When you see GDBR10, that's the one we're looking for. Okay, all I'm doing is opening that up so that way I can cut and paste the symbol. Um, if you want to have an individual chart like this, uh, obviously you can do that. And you can see now we have this chart. Now this is showing the 10-year rate of the German bond yield for 10-year rate. Um, if you every time you open up a new chart, it'll give you your history, okay, and what I'm only I'm going to just copy that because I don't trust myself to remember it. Why not get it on this page? And you got to type in colon ind. Okay, and then what that does is it compares the two. Okay, so we have the orange is the U.S. 10-year bond yield, and then you have the green, which is the German, or which is closely associated to the fiber your USD the green is seen here now here's what I want you to look at if you look at this chart you'll notice that the orange okay has a low here goes higher then goes lower again but look at the low is higher than it is here you do not see that happening with the German okay the German went lower Okay, and you'd probably be seeing it easier if I went to three year. Yeah. We went lower in the German and higher in the US. So comparing the lows respectively, there is a accumulation going on and it's seen with the US bond yield. Okay. So now if we go back to Google once again and we do a ten year UK bond yield chart. You're going to be looking for again the Bloomberg and it'll say government bond 10 year note generic. The GUK 
GU10IND. Okay, I'm just going to copy it from here. And then actually open the chart up so you can see it. So now it's in my clipboard. I can just drop it in on my first chart for comparison reasons. And you can see here, change it to a year. You can see the same thing happening here that the bond market's yield turns on the dime in that same April May time period and starts rallying up. So now if we go back to the first chart where I already have the US and German, I'm going to paste the UK and by having the three on here you can see now the orange makes a lower low than we had here the red makes a higher low and the green makes a lower low so there's a divergence between the three okay and if I go to a six month um, now you really can't see it it's got to be seen on in one year but uh, my advice would be is you want to pull this up every month and take a snapshot picture uh, just do a screen, uh, screen capture um, and just keep a record of it and you'll be able to go back and look at where it diverged but basically if you look at every three months or so there is a shift okay there's a shift in these uh, these yields okay and you can see the happening here at the beginning of the year where the green or the German 10-year did not make a higher high whereas the British UK yield did and so did the American so that that was the shift when they started to move lower okay so there is a continuous move up and down up and down but generally around the springtime there's a sustained move that, uh, that moves throughout the, you know, the summer and it's based on uh, you know, income tax um, and portfolio addressing that goes along with uh, you know uh, money flow and moving things from uh, one asset class to another and the overall basic global uh, you know money system okay and it just repeats all the time it's just, it's, just, it's always there if you just look at the higher time frame macro view like this it's very easy to get in sync with the tide now just for completeness sake okay we're gonna look at the British pound Okay, and we're just going to show you the effects, again, just for completeness sake, not to, that we're going to be utilizing the uh, cable in our examples, but I want you to see that the effects are similar with this pair as well. Okay. Here's our April. Now it actually made a low earlier in the year. It came off. Here's a low that's tradable. Here's a May low that was tradable. And we came down. This is where I was telling everyone in my market review in advance that this level here was going to be uh, sensitive and we would see a, a buying opportunity. And uh, here we are, 900 pips later, it we're up here. And where was it going to go back to? An old. High. Why was it rallying up like this and continuing pushing higher and higher and higher and higher? Everyone's scratching their head saying what's going on. It's because it's chasing the yields. Okay. And there's been no clear discernible means of reversing in the yield market. So therefore there's no real clear discernible reason to expect this thing to reverse and trade and blow out this low. So um, I would still be hunting uh, bullish scenarios longer term, but certainly not negating any short term intraday scalping or short-term intraday uh, day trading scenarios for being a bear so now we have covered the 10-year rate I'm sorry 10-year t-note okay if you do your analysis on this uh, futures market uh, everything is reverse in terms of the interest rates yield and if the 10 years going lower that means that the bonds are going higher the, the actual rate yielding the interest rate and if that's the case the currency markets are going to chase yield okay so if the yields are dropping they're going to go and follow it and if it's going up it's going to be following it as well okay so if that's been insightful to you
and obviously you know it's going to take some time and a long time to learn this concept because it takes a while for these things to, uh, to cycle through you know on an annual basis and quarterly basis but I promise you if you'd spend some time it'll be absolutely a wealth of insight that is not gleanable anywhere on the internet okay guys we are looking at the time frame section of this episode now obviously um, you know it could be very daunting for you as a trader especially if you're new and you just sit down in front of the charts and you're thinking to yourself you know what am I supposed to be looking at you know, am I supposed to be looking at a five minute chart how about a 30 minute chart you know the guy I've read on the forum said he looks at a two minute chart and how about the other guy he looks at a tick chart and this other guy says he ain't looking at anything but a weekly chart you know so what do you do with all that well the main thing is is you have to keep in mind that whatever time frame you're trading that's where you work within okay so basically knowing your time frame for your trade is your primary objective now the professional perspective okay the the frame of your trade should be at least built upon three time frames and that's what we're teaching here uh, I'm building in a large introduction into basically Alexander Elder's triple screen approach with an ICT twist so if we're a position trader you would utilize the monthly the weekly and a daily chart okay and you'd be looking for monthly higher level uh, time frame support resistance levels and reaction levels and weekly chart as well and then keying off of the daily chart for your trades now in this time frame you don't need to be in front of the charts all the time in fact you're probably going to be trading very few um, setups throughout the year but for those that have really very very few uh, hours of the week to, to you know put into trading um, position trades may be the way to go uh, if you are a little bit more free and you have a lot more uh, you know, hours of available to you for uh, intraday or I'm sorry intra week trading uh, swing trades might be up your alley uh, we use the daily the four hour and the one hour chart and that's really what this series has been framed upon the daily chart and four hour chart really are the institutional uh, frames for uh, your your trade setups and your uh, your trade ideas um, the one hour basis you could uh, you could substitute that with a 15 minute chart it, it's really up to you okay there's that's where the level of flexibility comes in now short-term trading your high high time frame chart would be the four hour and the one hour being your mid time frame and your 15 minute chart would be your uh, execution time frame and obviously for day trades and scalps your one hour would be high, higher time frame your 15 minute would be your mid time frame and your five minute chart would be your execution time frame now at any one of these levels of uh, time frame analysis you can always break it down further to the lowest form of uh, charting in other words you know it could go down to a one minute chart now I don't use one minute charts uh, the lowest I go is five minute and that's only when I've really honed into a specific uh, key level and I'm in either either day trading or scalping which I don't do very much of but uh, m most of my trades are uh, day trades short term and uh, swing trades but that's the framework you utilize when you're breaking down the market and how you digest it and if you're going to be a, a specific type of trader if you work with these three time frames as, as suggestions I think they'll work uh, well with you in terms of your development all right let's talk about cycles in the marketplace okay and we're gonna be talking about some smart money concepts and some of these concepts again go back to Larry Williams and again he was one of my first technical analyst quote unquote mentors and one of the coolest things I learned and it didn't really hit me until I started trading the bond market in the S&P but um, he taught a concept that's very very generic and it goes right over your head if you're a new trader and you're thinking to yourself what well, is stupid or that's not uh, you know exciting or that's pretty obvious but it's amazing how when you're trading or you're looking for setups you forget this phenomenon the concept is basically how the market moves from trading ranges or consolidations to swings or trends and they move immediately right back into a consolidation and then after consolidation people get sick and tired of the marketplace they don't worry about getting in or they chased the previous move and that inside that little consolidation or these rectangles or squares if you look at on this chart as, a, as an example uh, that's where dealers and market makers 
establish their positions okay so we do not chase the marketplace we do not chase price rallies we do not chase price declines we work within these consolidations smart money accumulates during consolidations or when the market's not attractive okay and we're going to build on this model as we go through the series but it's very important for you to start looking at the charts with this premise in mind are we consolidating because that's the next that the precursor is the consolidation then the next thing to expect would be that a release that dynamic thrust up or down in price action where everybody gets really excited you see everybody tweeting about it you see every analyst saying they had it right you know for the last six months that's really what you're looking for you want to be in there before everyone else is talking about it okay all right we're going to be talking about the concept of power of three okay and what this is is basically a understanding of how the market works on a daily range okay now we're going to be looking at this bar chart okay now obviously we we deal with candlesticks a lot in, in my videos and, and maybe in your own tr uh, trading and your technical analysis but for a couple minutes I'll, let's spend a few moments talking about how the open high low close bar is beneficial now I'm not going to give you a full treatise on on this because I have actually a, a tutorial that I'm re-releasing that has much more insight that I'm going to go over in that but this is going to be a brief introduction the concept briefly is this when the market opens up on a daily range okay you as a trader you want to be participating in large range moves okay like we just discussed in the previous slide you want to be entering the market when it's quiet when there's not a whole lot of activity or at least when the ranges start to compress Okay. When the ranges start to get small, people get really bored with that market and they start chasing the next pair or the next uh, commodity market or whatever it is that's moving around a lot. That's the one they're going to mo move to. Well, during those small little consolidations or small inside days or small uh, daily ranges, that's when I get really excited because I want to be in there when the markets are getting real, real quiet. They're like a spring winding up tighter and tighter and tighter. And eventually something, whatever the catalyst is, I don't always know or even care really to know what it is, makes the market take off and hopefully in a predetermined direction that I was positioned in before it takes place. That's, that's essentially what you want to be doing in your trading, whether it be day trading, scalping, or short-term trading or position trading or swing trading, whatever style of trading it is, you want to be getting in your position during these consolidations and contractions of ranges. Okay, Looking at this example here on the left-hand side of the euro, this daily chart, just stare at this chart for a couple minutes and you'll start seeing that how the ranges get smaller, now excluding the small little itty bitty tiny little ranges, that's actually a Sunday candle. So you kind of got to like disregard those. But before the ranges get really, really big, they actually get smaller. Okay, and it, there's other examples of uh, time frames and sample sizes that you can utilize to, to better illustrate this, but I've been looking at this for years and I can see, just simply looking at it for a few seconds, I can see the, the, the pattern in itself where the ranges get smaller, then expand, get smaller, get expand, then get smaller. That phenomenon, okay, is one of the truest cycles in the marketplace and it goes over everyone's head, they don't pay attention to it, and many times when they hear me talking about it, it's like, well, that's pretty obvious. Is it really obvious? Because the last few times you took a trade, maybe they were losers. Did you take in consideration what was going on? Did you chase the market after it rallied up 60 pips, okay, without any kind of retracement or whatever? That's the nature of this, uh, this cycle, okay? And some of the best money can be made simply with just applying the con uh, consolidations to trend or swing component we just discussed in the previous slide and adding when the daily ranges themselves get smaller. So inside those larger res, uh, consolidations, okay, or rectangles where the trading range market environment in, uh, develops, inside that trading range, if you start getting small inside days or small little uh, daily ranges getting smaller than the previous days, then you have a really good scenario where it sets up where there's going to be an explosive move one day, two day, three day up or down, depending upon the directional bias that was uh, the precursor going into that condition. But now let's break the daily bar itself down. Looking at the opening, assuming that we were looking for a up day, okay, or we're in a bullish scenario. Generally speaking, 
if you are trading in an area where it's highly probable for the market to trade up, maybe we're in a consolidation on a daily chart or a four hour, and, it, and the ranges start contracting, okay? On large range days, this is a notepad moment, get this written down in your notepad. On large range days, the open tends to be at the opposite extreme of the daily range opposed to the close. As you can see in this example, obviously this is an illustrative example I drew with uh, the computer, but it's going to communicate the, the basic premise. The open generally is on an up day or a large range with an up day uh, bias and a close typically sees the open at the low of the day or near the low with the close at or very near the high of the day. Okay. Now look at the example for a moment to the left. <clears throat> notice how many again this is a daily chart of the euro notice how many times that the open is at the opposite extreme of the daily bar where the close is okay there's enormous amounts of opportunity within the daily range and that is what you should be looking for you want to be trading at the very minimum in the directional bias of the daily range. Okay, We talked about the notion of having the higher low form in the early part of the week. Okay, So that same principle applies here just on a daily chart. Okay, So now what this means is if you're bullish, you want to be looking at the opening price and looking at that as your filter. So you want to be buying not very much above it, if at all really and certainly below it okay because what you'll learn is the opening price very rarely works both sides up or down before going up on an up day in other words price does not spend a whole lot of time monkeying around with the opening price if it goes down it's only going down briefly for a very short distance maybe reach blow out some stops maybe uh, retest an old consolidation dip into an old block of uh, orders for institutional purposes and then shoot straight up and, and continuously work one side of the market all the way through the, uh, the trading session and then closing off many times a little bit off the high looking at the example you have here you can see that just about happening almost on a daily basis the vice versa would be obviously on a down move the open would be very near the high and the close very close to the low the general principle is the low is formed briefly after the opening on up days and the high generally forms between 1500 and 1600 GMT. Put that in your notepad and then you test that theory on your own going forward for the next couple of weeks. Okay, let's look at a large range day. Okay, we've uh, pointed out this one specifically here and this is one I actually did trade. Now admittedly I got out during the middle part of the day because I had thought that it was gonna uh, retrace a little bit deeper and give me a better opportunity but I missed it and uh, I was only able to catch the first leg of the daily trend but this large range day okay came with the principles that we just discussed okay we had the chart here on the right hand side is going to depict a few things the first let's look at this okay we have the beginning of the new day here Okay, then the market peters around. Okay, this is all Asia. Okay, and this vertical line delineated here is midnight New York time. Okay, then you see the market drop down during the European session into London. Then the market takes off, goes vertical, goes into a consolidation. Okay, and during this time, what I actually expected was it to, to retrace a little bit deeper, maybe come back down and to touch this high in here. But uh, this was the New York open uh, trade here and then it violently traded higher going into the latter part of the day. And then peters off from the high and closes just a little bit off the high, but certainly well way away from the opening price. And then after this vertical delineation here, this is 1800 GMT. And I'm going to talk about these two markers in a moment because I've really never uh, discussed this on any other uh, video or series or any kind of uh, discussion but I'm actually going to highlight more insight as to why 1800 is a very significant number 
then the market essentially goes quiet going into the new day. Now, what is so special about the midnight time frame on New York? Well, the North American continent doesn't consider the new day like the FX market generally calls the, you know, in Wellington being the new, the new start of a new day. I don't consider that as a new day. Okay. Now, I certainly take in consideration all of the Asian uh, trading. Okay. But I know this is going to be very confusing, but I always count that as yesterday's trade. My new day begins at midnight New York Standard Time. Now, again, it's going to probably going to throw a lot of you off, but just understand this is how I break the market down. Midnight New York Time to 1800 GMT time, okay, or basically 2 p.m. New York time, okay. That's the cutoff of the daily range. Everyone asks, when's the close? You know, when does New York close? Or when does this and when does that? Let's talk about the commodity market for a moment. Because before FX was opened up to the general public, the only time you could really participate in the currency market was if you were trading the options market or the futures and or mid-am contracts on the commodity exchanges. And it was in the form of open outcry. Now, open outcry is still in existence today, not as predominantly as it was years ago because everything's slowly transitioning to electronic, much to their dismiss, much to their dismay. But there is essentially a, a rhythm to the marketplace still based on that open outcry. Now, put this in your notepad. Currency markets, okay, or com dollars, okay, that means the commodity markets that trade on the futures contract basis. That means Australian dollar, uh, Canadian dollar, British pound, Swiss franc, um, Japanese yen. Okay, those currencies, okay, are com dollars. They, they can be traded as a futures contract. The futures contract open outcry pit begins trading at 7.20 New York time. Now, what do you think is so significant about that time? That's 20 minutes after the beginning of our New York Open kill zone. Okay, Why is the New York Open kill zone so cool and so easy to trade? It's because that market uh, event, open outcry, also is going to be involved in the daily range. Okay, Why 1800? Well, because at 2 o'clock in the afternoon in New York time, the open outcry pit closes and they are gone for the day. And you can see here that clearly is illustrated. There's no more volatility, very, very, very little volatility at all, unless there's an FOMC, uh, uh, you know, interest rate announcement, which typically comes in around two o'clock in the afternoon, um, you know, in late in the afternoon, where really nobody should be trading anyway. So, will you miss some moves? Certainly, if you, if, that's, if you're really involved in trying to, you know, gamble trading those types of events like non-farm payroll. I can certainly do without trading one Friday out of every month. Okay, I don't really care to be a part of that roller coaster. I can trade it. I just choose not to. But if you bracket out your days like this, okay, on an intraday basis, I think what you'll start seeing is there's a clear symmetry to the market that goes unnoticed by 99% of mentors or gurus or teachers or even traders. And this is the actual daily range that goes on every single day. If you understand how that works, you can see this, the open, the down move, the move up, the high, and then off the close. And that's what you see here, the open, the down move, the high forming, and then off the close. I mean, off the high as a close. So that's what we're looking for when we're trading intraday or getting positioned during upward bullish market environments. Okay, let's talk about kill zones. Okay, and first we're going to talk about it in my time zone, which is the Eastern Standard Time. I live on the East Coast of North America in Baltimore, Maryland. And basically, um, we're looking at the European and American session. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time, uh, or actually uh, really any time at all, really talking about Asia or uh, the Pacific uh, Australian session because it's basically the quiet portion of the daily range and really when markets are accumulating new orders okay and we'll talk more about that later on in other episodes but for now understand this i generally start hunting during the frankfurt open which is 2 a.m 
And many, many times you'll hear me commonly call 2 a.m. the beginning of the London session. And it's either because I'm rushing trying to talk about something and really just inadvertently misquoting it. But just understand this. When I get up in the middle of the night to start trading in my time zone, okay, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm in there hunting. Okay, But I'm hunting essentially the move that sets the high or the low of the day. And I want to trade in a directional bias for that daily range going into London close and or 1800 GMT. Okay. The London kill zone, I use 5 a.m. as my close of shop. In other words, if I haven't established a position by 5 a.m. my time, okay, I basically take a nap and come back right before 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Generally at 6.30 in the morning, I'm peeking at the charts and seeing what's going on. Now, for the American session here, you see 8 a.m. And that's commonly what's been uh, disclosed with many other trading teachers. Okay, But if you look at your charts, guys, many times the moves are starting about 7 a.m., between 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Okay, And now you understand why, because the open outcry pit starts at 7.20 a.m. New York time. So there's a reason why there's something that uh, you know, generates a signal there or a swing high or swing low that can be incorporated on that daily range to trade intraday setups, whether it be scalps or uh, day trades. And I usually close up shop anywhere between 1500 to 1600 GMT, generally 80% of the time. And then when it's really, really taken off and just blowing out all objectives I had for the day, I'll leave a very small portion of the trade on for 1800 GMT, but very rarely does it ever happen. Um, many, most of the time, 80% of the time, I'm out of the market by 1600 GMT. So between 1500 and 1600 GMT, that's usually the close of uh, the day for me. That's where not usually you'll see the high or low form for the day. Okay, folks, we are looking at the Euro USD. This is a five-minute chart. And what I have delineated on this chart here, we have these red dashed lines, okay, and green dashed lines. Okay, now if I keep my mouse right on top of it, it's going to show the ICT Asian range. And what I've done was simply, uh, um, if you can pull up the indicator, and I edited the beginning and end of specific windows of time. This is the London Open kill zone that I trade with. I uh, begin st stalking setups for the European session at 6 GMT and as late as 10 GMT and for the New York Open I made it real easy and something that's generic you guys can use over and over and over again 12 to 15 GMT okay 12 to 15 GMT took out all of the uh, subtle nuances that make me use 30 minute uh, dividers and such I'm just giving you a block of time 12 to 15 GMT uh, and that'll give you everything you would need for the New York Open session now, when you have this on your chart, okay, um, and I guess, I'm sure you're probably asking yourself, you know, what's great? Can I have that indicator too? <laughs> uh, I'm going to supply it. I'm going to um, add it to um, a file server, and if fxgears.com could uh, could allow me to um, host it on the thread I'm doing there, uh, that's wonderful. If not, uh, I'll get with Jack and see if he could hook you guys up so you guys can uh, download it and a couple other indicators that we're going to be employing uh, in this video series. Now what I want to draw your attention to is that I want you to see the highs and lows that form during these particular sessions. This is the New York Open session and the London Open session. The high of the day formed during the London Open and the low was essentially almost formed during the New York session going into that 1600 hour. The next day, okay, um, we have a nice tradable rally up into this area of uh, time. It was just outside of it by two, two bars here, uh, or in other words, 10 minutes, and then it sold off. We have a nice opportunity to get in sync with the daily trend here with a high forming in New York open and making a, a move lower. Uh, we have the low forming in London and then another tradable low off of the direction formed from the London open. Here is the New York open trade. And this happened to be one that I took uh, part in 
in a live trade. So this is the scenario. I'll go, I'll go over this because I haven't been doing video uh, reviews in a couple weeks. Uh, just give you this as a as a highlight. Okay. Uh, the price made uh, all these multiple stabs lower and showed an unwillingness to go lower. Consolidated. Uh, found a low in London open. Traded up and then retraced into the New York session going into optimal trade entry and a sweet spot and uh, rallied on up. Now, if you use your uh, Fibonacci tools, Here's your 162 extension, nailing it for the high. And uh, we'll talk more about targeting and, and exit prices and all that stuff uh, when we get into later portions of the series. But uh, you can see how the London and New York open kill zones here gave you very nice opportunities for setup. Um, here we have another scenario where using the previous day's low, okay, and all we're doing here is highlighting the importance or the influence that the New York and London kill zones uh, provide for uh, setting up opportunities to trade. This area here, okay, during the London Open, we retraced inside of this range here and then where we had this consolidation and the market moved out of it. Uh, this displacement can only happen when there is a large entity behind the move. Okay, retail traders will not cause this. Okay, and then price retraces back into it, and then what's it do? It rallies up again. Where's it rally to? To take out old highs in here that were too clean. Okay, this is way too clean, and price stabbed up in there and gave an opportunity to take profits if you were a, sh uh, a short term scalper on the long side, but the bias was lower. Okay, and we talked about earlier, um, you know, how. It's important to focus on these higher time frame uh, key reaction uh, levels, and th that was the reason why we saw this really explosive move lower. Uh, the high formed during the New York open session, and the low actually formed in the New York uh, session as well. Uh, the following day, we had a short term uh, high formed in here, but a tradable low formed off the uh, fiber in the New York session making the high here and then closing the week out as we see. The kill zones are where you bracket in terms of time. Now by itself it doesn't do anything for you. You have to have an understanding of support resistance and um, key music, uh, reaction levels and directional premise to frame your trade on but inside these little pockets okay and really it looks like this if uh, if it's hard for you to see it's this whole window right here of time inside this block of time is where the scenario of a trade should form okay and the same thing goes for the uh, London open inside this area or a small little pocket of time and price that's where the scenario is going to unfold for you to take a trade okay so it allows you to really hone in like a scope on a rifle like a sniper to, to zero in on where you should be sitting down in front of your computer okay if you're a London open or a London trader this is where you do your business okay if you are a London trader and don't trade during the New York session you're cheating yourself because there's a lot of times the setups uh, that you may have missed being incorrect or just missed altogether will give you a, an opportunity to get in sync with that move during the New York session. My my best advice as a mentor would be to really try to learn that New York session. Um, it's very uh, comfortable to trade as, an, as a North American trader unless you're on the, uh, the, the West Coast and if you're out there on the West Coast you know that's just something that's going to 
have to suck up because there's nothing <laughs> nothing more about it that I can say that uh, you know you guys got generally uh, very favorable weather. Um, so if this is the uh, thing you got to trade in for it, then haha. <laughs> so uh, anyway, the New York session obviously to me I think is the easiest one to learn. It's the most uh, forgiving because it gives you the London session behind you as a uh, you know, a catalyst just to frame your trade off of. So if you have a higher time frame support and resistance level noted, a directional premise in mind, and then you have, uh, you know, the London session you know, keying you in that same direction, man, you have a loaded deal as you have here in this example on the, the 4th of September. The, uh, let's take all this stuff off actually. If you have, any doubts that uh, there is some uh, significance behind these uh, particular windows of time, um, it's going to be your homework to actually go through uh, the next week, okay, and have those uh, time windows bracketed out. Um, again, uh, for the New York session, it's going to be 12 GMT to 1500 GMT. And 6 GMT to 10 GMT for the London Open Kill Zone. And for those that have been following me for a while, if you notice there's a slight difference in those windows, I just did it for this teasing series because there's a lot of members of FX Gears that's not familiar with my stuff. And I'm not going to be populating their website with all of my videos, so I just more or less uh, made it user friendly so that way you guys can have generic time windows to, to work with. And they'll be very uh, friendly to you. There's nothing going to be uh, missed outside of those windows of time. But uh, if you do this for a week, okay, my advice is to, to see what happens during these windows of time, okay, and when there is um, high level, higher time frame uh, reaction level around these same pockets of uh, opportunity in terms of time kill zones. And then you'll see a confluence of events unfolding that if you miss it, we'll find out more about it in the fourth installment because we're going to go over the examples. But really, I want you to uh, see what you think may happen based on everything we've covered so far. It's not a test, okay? It's just a learning opportunity for you to familiarize yourself with price action. Okay, we are looking at the ICT market maker buy model okay this very crude depiction of how markets move on a fractal basis okay um, generally what you'll see is the market will open inside of a consolidation or trading range and not open but they'll enter a uh, trading range environment now this buy model is really universal. It could be applied to any time frame, but we're going to be basically looking at it on the four hour, one hour, 15 and five minute basis. Okay. And what will happen is, is the market will move out of that consolidation, trade out of it, and then come back and many times retest that first consolidation. Okay. So if you miss the accumulation portion of the first wave down, you can get back in sync with it by waiting for this retracement up okay and this the swings aren't generally in this example aren't really uh, uniform in other words this could come up a little bit higher into the range from this high here to this low and give you some kind of a, a 62 to 79 percent retracement level not necessary but uh, there's other factors that you could hunt in here to set up a, a scenario to sell short if you want to participate in the first leg going lower. Um, once price comes down into a resistance level or a support level, um, you know, an inversion level where maybe uh, this level was possibly an old level of resistance and my market broke through, came back down now to testing its support. Basically, when price comes down to a clear level of re support, rather, we could expect the market to turn around. Now, it doesn't mean we just go in there and start buying it up. You can, but I don't generally teach that as a means of doing it. After some years of training and uh, trading real time, once you get some uh, experience under your belt, you may be able to take trades like that, but that's not what I'm illustrating in these uh, 
uh, videos. I want you to wait for some com confirmation. The confirmation comes in the form of a break in market structure and it moves higher and then many times comes back and gives you an opportunity to retest that first consolidation in here after the climax reversal pattern forms at support. Price will come up and rally out of that again, move into another consolidation. Okay, and we could be working off of the levels that was formed over here. Okay, so whatever time frame this pattern forms in, okay, you're going to be utilizing, again, same premise of key support resistance. This will be another continuation pattern off of what would be expected as a climax reversal buy setup down here, off of a higher level time frame key support. When the secondary buy scenario happens here, or it just makes one. Okay, there's, that's why these two boxes are blue. Generally, it can be one or two small little pauses or consolidations, and then there's an explosive move up to take out the highs above the first consolidation. Okay, and the premise is this. The market makers start building up orders in here, okay, and a whole price within a clearly defined range. There's not enough buyers to keep it higher, and there's not enough uh, sellers to take it lower. So what will happen is, is that market makers keep it in a tight range to accumulate positions. Okay, Now what they want is to hold the market in a, in a holding pattern to establish a, a premise for them to take the market the other way. Same thing can be seen here just in reverse on a market maker sell model. We have a consolidation and the move comes out of the consolidation and the highs of that consolidation are usually retested. Now again, it doesn't always have to happen like that, but we expect it to happen. If it doesn't come back down, at least many times it'll give you some kind of a small little pause in here, or maybe a bull flag formation type thing, and then it'll rally up into a clearly defined resistance level. Inside of that resistance level, there will be a climax reversal pattern. Okay, uh, Many times you'll see, okay, a, 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 here's a little notepad moment for you. If you want to see when indicators work like they do in the textbooks. Okay, if you see this pattern here unfolding like this and it trades up into a resistance level, many times you're going to see your standard divergence of the MACD, your stochastics, your RSI, your CCI, you know, spaghetti, <laughs> whatever it is that you use for your indicators. If it causes a divergence for a buy or sell signal, you're going to see it form here. Okay, and then, because think about it, if, this, if these indicators didn't call major moves, well, nobody would pay any attention to them. And the only reason why we pay attention to them is because they work on the left side of the chart. We can see it it, it, it did it the last time, right? So it's going to do it again. But nobody understands the, the reasons behind why it diverged, okay? And it's based on the higher time frame resistance level and the fact that the, the dealers and market makers are taking price up there and they stab that price level over and over and over again to distribute the orders that were accumulated here, okay? So they're buying it all up in here, okay? They're distributing a little bit here. They're distributing a whole lot of it here. They're dumping it, okay? And then when the market pulls back, a lot of traders view this area as a, another continuation pattern, much in the same way it does here, okay? Or maybe this is a bull flag, okay? And what they'll do is they'll buy it with the expectation it's going to continue moving on higher. But what will happen is, is they'll have buy orders, you know, in these small little areas of uh, dealing ranges that we're going to discuss later on. And what will happen is they'll pair orders up and stack up all kinds of shorting opportunities and they'll d distribute the market very heavily. And what will happen is, is once they get a block of trades on the other side of their position, essentially, they will do a real quick repricing and, and it'll trap traders. And what will happen is, is that you've, you've done this before and you know exactly what I'm talking about, even those guys in demos. You put a trade on, okay, maybe you bought it up in here, something like that, okay, and the market drops down hard, okay, and you're thinking, okay, well, maybe it's just uh, going to come down here and retest some um, resistance, turn support, and then it'll resume up, okay, and then you start seeing this little pop up here, and you get excited, thinking, okay, I'm getting ready to go back to break even, but the dealers know that, okay, the market makers already have these folks trapped, and if you went in there and you bought, you're trapped just like they are. They don't want to give you an opportunity to get out of that trade. Okay, they're going to keep you on a negative float. Okay, you're going to be below the uh, the dealer spread. Okay, and maybe even pips, you know, in negative beyond that. Okay, and then what happens is they'll do another repricing. And now here's what you're going to do. You're going to say, okay, well we're just retesting this whole area in here again. 
and we're going to find some support, but it blows through it. Okay. The dealers will go into another consolidation thinking, okay, well, I know what this is. This is one of those retracements where from the low up to this high, we got one of those ICT optimal trade entries. <laughs> nope, not here. What will happen is, is they'll, they'll, one more time, they'll run it, gun it lower, and they'll take out the stops that are placed on the folks that were right, that bought this rally here, and just held on for too long. Okay, so there, it's an accumulation. It's a little distribution here, or reaccumulation for new longs. Okay, and then when they get up here, they distribute all of this in here, but they do it very quickly. That's why when you get up to these levels, price doesn't stay up there very long. Why? Because they're doing a massive distribution, and you see the price really drop off fast. But when it drops off, it'll, do, it'll give you a little bit of consolidation, one more rally up. When it gets on the other side of that, that zenith of this price move, when we get to this start rallying up, this is where you start selling. Okay, and if you can identify this pattern, it makes your trading a whole lot easier because you understand what they're doing and where they're taking price. Okay, guys, we got some key levels here noted on our time frame of a daily chart. And we're going to give some examples of what is a market maker profile. I'm going to give you a buy example and some sell examples. And the way you utilize them is obviously you have to have a hard time frame support resistance level, but they can occur on any time frame. But they're more apt to occur on a daily, four hour, and or an hourly time frame. And then if you have a understanding of what the directional premise is on a lower time frames, you can use them on one, five, 15 minute, 30 minute, and hourly charts and such. But for now, we're just going to give you examples on finding off of a daily time frame. See price trades down into this level here. It's an old support, and all we did was round it to a 127.60 level. We just calibrated the level to a round number. We're going to look at this area here for a buying market profile for a market maker profile, and then we have one in here trading into this resistance level. Okay, and then we're going to go and look at the sell scenario that we called in the last video, and how it was a market maker sell model. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this particular day, and uh, the actual candle comes in at uh, July 9th, 2013, and we're going to start with an hourly perspective on it. Okay, and all I did was use this to highlight the time. Okay, we have... Okay, market in a consolidation. Okay, we have a consolidation here. Market breaks out of the consolidation and it retests that same consolidation here. Trades lower. Okay, and there's a couple minor little retracements to get in sync with that move lower, making the actual low here. And then a false swing lower. This is the actual high. Oh, I'm sorry, the actual low point of the market maker sell model in here. Okay, and then price rallies through, takes out this high here, and very little pausing at all in here. It just explodes. And where does it explode to? Above the consolidation in here. Okay, so again, the same price model here in this fractal pattern is seen on a hourly basis. You can see ultimately it comes back and, and trades even further. If we go and look at the daily chart again, and we're going to look at this example here for a sell. Okay, right in here. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see this candle right there. Okay, these levels of key support resistance on the higher time frame would be noted in advance as as price trades up into it we would expect to see a market maker sell model unfold and let's go down to a 15 minute okay you see that happening here and let's actually go down to a five minute let's see a little bit better and just take this rectangle off because it's no longer needed okay we have 
the consolidation, to move out of the consolidation, and then retest. Now this part does not have to happen, okay? But generally you'll see it happen. And then there's a continuation moving up, makes the high, or the capitulation portion of the buy model. Now it turns to the sell side of it. Okay, so we are now in a market maker sell model profile and we would expect to see this consolidation ran out as you see here. Market moves down, consolidation then here, another break lower. Where's it trade to? Below the consolidation where accumulated positions were taken on. And you can see ultimately that's the uh, the price model right there. Okay, and let's go back out to a daily. Okay, we're going to look at the 134.30 level. Okay, see this high here, the lows in here, the bodies of the candles as well. So we have 134.30, small round number. Um, it's just above this high as well. And we're going to zoom in and look at this profile right here. And as price moves up into these levels, we would reasonably expect to see a market maker sell model. We're going into an hourly time frame yeah and we're going to zoom out okay we can see the consolidation let's take these vertical lines off clean it up a little bit you can see the consolidation in here consolidated moved out came back retested the consolidation moved on up false rally higher breaks down rallies again on the other side and again this is the cell model so again this is the cell model so you're gonna see price run out this consolidation on the low end you can see that happened there okay so that's the market maker sell model. And again, we called this market lower here before the actual move ensued, given some uh, further credibility to the analysis concepts. And it's not always hindsight cherry picking. All right, let's talk about market orders and how dealers work within uh, the marketplace and how they perceive traders psychology and how you can pretty much get close to what they're doing without even seeing the order books all right we're looking at a conceptual idea of what market price is right now and we're not going to have a chart we're just going to conceptually talk about the generic principles associated with how reading the market all right let's assume for a moment the market price moves up to what would be considered a key level okay or it could be moving down to a key level it doesn't matter but we're saying for the moment right now we are trading at a highly sensitive price point that reacted most recently or maybe a couple weeks ago there was a significant reaction in that same price level so now market moves uh, whether it be up or down we now have a market price that's equal to or very close to that key level the question comes to mind is where do we go from here do we move higher or do we move lower when you're watching price, what you're going to be looking for are clues, okay? There's going to be a, a fingerprint, if you will, of what may be unfolding. And generally what happens is above the market price, okay, there are protective buy stops on those that have maybe put on net short positions. And it's many times simply above that, just a little bit more, there's going to be pending sell limit orders for those that have been possibly being long. Okay, in other words, we have net long traders in the market and we have net short traders in the market. The net traders on the short side want to protect their position. So they're going to have their protective buy stops somewhere above the market price. And again, the premise is, is this market price is now trading at a key level. Okay, and because traders always have a differing view if even if the marketplace is a implied support level folks may be really looking to sell short okay and we're going to talk about that in a moment but for those that have 
saw this level as a potential support zone and they want to be expecting some kind of a bounce up, they would have pending sell limit orders to exit some of their position and or all of it to, for a profit. And then obviously folks that expect to see it go up only if it proves a little bit more that it's going to move upwards, they'll have a new long buy stop. Okay, so in other words, we have three types of orders that exist generally above current market price. That being pending sell limit orders for those that are net long, protective buy stops on those that are net short, and new potential buy stops for those that want to enter on buying strength. On the converse side, you obviously you have for those that are buying this this particular price level, you have protective sell stops protecting what they believe there is a, a, a potential buy scenario unfolding. Then you have st uh, sell stops that are resting below the market price for new short selling. So in other words, they want to sell on weakness. And below that, usually you have uh, pending limit orders to be uh, you know, tripped for um, covering short positions. Okay, in other words, they're using that type of order to exit on a profit target objective for short positions. The question is, where are we most likely building up orders? Okay, and it's very um, tricky in the beginning because you have to spend some time looking at charts. Okay, this is going to come with time. And when you hear me talk about, and a lot of times that you'll hear me in my market review videos or sometimes in my teaching videos, I, uh, many times I'll talk out loud, okay, my thought process. Um, this it, it isn't always meant for you to uh, um, be taught what I'm always speaking, okay? In other words, I may be thinking out loud about a phenomenon that may be unfolding at a particular level, okay? And I'm not really meaning to teach that to you because it's something that you're going to have to drill over top of charts to, to learn on your own. Okay, and this is the part of uh, the experience factor that comes into play and why patience is so important because if you don't have patience, you won't give yourself the time to develop this knack because that's exactly what this is. I don't have an order book. Uh, I don't have uh, access to uh, you know what these uh, orders are outside of what everybody else has on a retail level. Okay, um, I can make phone calls and ask where orders are stacking up, but that's only really limited to a certain uh, portion of the actual marketplace. So the psychology behind price action is very readable. Okay, and it's by using these simple six types of orders around market price. Obviously, if price has moved up to a resistance level, okay one would expect uh, you know, sellers to come into place and then there'd be protective buy stops established and those that have been net long they want to be getting out of their position and they're greedy they want to be trying to get that extra little bit of drops of lemon juice out of that lemon they want to squeeze it for all it's worth so they'll try to put their limit orders on the far um, you know, side of the particular resistance level okay because it's greed this market like anything else is a breeding ground for greed and obviously those that have been uh, you know, just introduced to the marketplace, they've been seeing the market go up for nine days straight. So therefore, if it goes up a little bit higher, that's when they want to buy. <laughs> and that's generally what happens is they buy the high of the market. Okay, And I've been there. I know what it's all about. And I know what it feels like. So, And you probably do too. If we had seen market price trade down to a key support level, okay, those that are entering in on uh, whatever would be implied as a buy signal for them, they would immediately put protective sell stop below the market price. And then obviously for those that have been uh, net short, okay, they have their limit orders below market price trying to get out, you know, with their greedy, uh, you know, um, expectations of getting out near a, 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 a very handsome price level to profit from. And again, the same guys that have been just introduced to the marketplace, you know, for the last 25 uh, days, you know, the marketplace has uh, been seeing lower prices. So therefore, if it goes down a little bit farther, then they'll sell short and they'll have uh, sell stops down there because they can't make from their trading desk because they're working at, you know, whatever they're doing, you know, you know, painting cars. So they want to have their uh, sell stops below the marketplace. And then many times you see them selling the low of the day. So let's talk about a little bit more detail of how market makers pair orders and how orders stack. 
let's assume for a moment that there is a highly sensitive price level of support or resistance at around that 132 big figure. Now when we look at a big figure, okay, and before I go any further, this could be a mid figure, okay, and then obviously the levels above it being uh, respective in terms of what we have here as an example, but keeping in true form of the institutional levels we like to follow, which are the big figures, the 20s, the 80s, the small round numbers, okay, and the mid 50 levels, okay, if price trades up to 132, don't expect 132 to always simply hold price back. Many times you'll see price trade up to that level and there'll be orders around the 10 level and around the 20 level. Many times you'll see price, even if it's going to go lower longer term, many times they'll sweep price up through the 10s and the 20s. And the reason why is because folks like to put their orders at odd numbers and such, okay, but really the institutional level traders, they work around uh, small round numbers, okay, the 10s, the 20s, they'll, they'll use those levels because it allows them to clean through particular price levels. And then maybe you've encountered slippage, okay, in other words, uh, you, you really wanted to get out at uh, 132.05, but maybe they filled you at 132.10, that's slippage. Why did they fill you at 132.10? Because that's where their order was for them to execute. So they're going to fill you there, not where you really want to get out at. Okay? Um, it doesn't happen all the time? No. But obviously, we as retail traders are at the, the mercy, if you will, of what the dealers are going to give us as an order. Okay? Maybe you had a trade executed, and you exited or entered, and then you had a requote later on. Okay? Maybe you got in... Um, a short position at 132 even, okay, and then later on found out that they quoted you 131.95 or 131.90, okay. That's pretty extreme in terms of slippage, but if it's an economic report, things like that can happen. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I just recently traded um, an economic report, and I had uh, you know seven pip slippage from where I was trying to get in and where I actually got filled. So um, you, you, that's the inherent nature of trading in fast, illiquid markets. And they're going to fill you where they want to get filled. Okay, so you're, they're going to be taking the other side of your trade. So understand that. If you're dealing through uh, uh, you know, a market maker or uh, an order desk, that's the type of uh, filling you're going to get with your orders. Okay, but if you think in terms of the big picture of how these market makers and uh, large bank dealing uh, traders work, they're going to work around these round numbers and always expect them to try to sweep to the next small little round number because that's generally where they'll take price and then it'll clean out all the guys that want to use a stop loss. Okay, they, maybe they sell short at 132 even on a limit and maybe they saw a price drop down to 131.90 and they're salivating because they think it's going to go to 130. Okay, so they put their stop loss at 132.03. Okay, well, the dealers know that, okay, and they're going to take price up, and do, just for good measure, they're going to run up to the 132.10 level, and that'll clear out a nice block of trades that would have had pending orders resting above it, like we just discussed in a previous slide, and allow them to promote liquidity, not only for themselves, but other, uh, you know, orders they have to do transactions for. All right, let's take a look at an environment where the 132 perhaps is a clearly discernible resistance level. Okay, and we're going to assume that market price is down here below that particular price level. And generally, you'll see this type of action. Okay, they'll take it up to the 80 level, okay, and price or retrace, pull off very sharply. Okay, and everybody understands, if you've been looking at the markets in any capacity, that the 80s, the 20s, and the 50s and full figures are very sensitive psychological numbers. Okay, and if the dealers can um, bounce price off of there, they'll trap a lot of traders thinking, okay, that was the high of the market. Then what will happen is they'll reprice, okay, and get folks that maybe didn't believe that was the high and they think it's still going to go to 132, they'll more or less buy that market up, okay, but then what they'll do is they'll take the market below the most recent swing low and stop those traders out. So now the folks that think on the short term that the price is going to go to 132 are now scared. They don't want to get in the market now, so they took those individuals out. If they were taken out 
when that recent move down below the recent swing low here. Okay, what is below there? They're going to put a what? Protective sell. Okay, if the dealers take the price down below that, that sell stop becomes a market order to do what? To sell to market. Who's going to buy it from them? The dealers. The dealers will buy up that pocket of liquidity, okay, and then they'll reprice and they'll take it up to that 132 figure, clearing out the stops that would have been resting at the 13190 for those that went short here. So now, is there anyone short? No. Okay. So where did they where does the dealers exit their position that they accumulated here? At the 13190 or thereabouts because that's about where the stop loss on the short the short sellers here would have their orders resting. So they clear out the pending orders and take it all the way up to the 132 figure. The next repricing comes in, they sell off. Folks say, okay, well, this is the top of the marketplace, so let's start selling. Okay, so they go short here. All of a sudden, you'll see the dealers take price back up again, and they'll clear out the 132. Why? Because the folks that have been watching that 132 level, once it trades there one time, and starts to trade off, they think that's it. It's a, it support and resistance is perfect. It never it never <laughs> has any blurry lines. It's crystal clear, laser guided, okay, and price is always going to stop right on that zero zero level. It doesn't, guys. You gotta have some flexibility and wait. Wait for the sure sign that this thing's gonna turn around. So when they clear all the way up to the one thirty two twenty level, now folks that were uh looking to sell, they're scared. They don't want to get in the market now. They don't know what's going to happen. Why? Because they watch the guys get blown out here. They watch the guys get blown out here. And this creates that pattern three drives higher or three Indians as it is uh, in the Street Smarts book. They'll do a massive repricing. They'll take out the swing low here. Why? Because there may be traders that were net long in here and got uh, you know, smart and realized this was probably going to uh, move higher but they don't want those guys in the marketplace either. Okay, so they're going to drive them and individuals out as well. Then they'll take price back above that 132 figure or rate at it. Okay, and this is typically when the market really makes its pattern of going short. Why? Because we have a breakdown in market structure after we clear out the orders that stack around these key levels. Then you'll see price do a, mass, uh, a dramatic repricing and take out all short term lows. And anybody that would be net long in that position, and now they're trapped. The next portion is, is then they'll get, uh, you know, traders to think, okay, this, this was it, you know, this was a false resistance level. Maybe this was, uh, you know, um, one of those patterns where it looked like it was a top, but it really wasn't, guys. So let's get on board, and, and they'll do a real quick repricing up. This is where you get the nice optimal trade entry sell short patterns, okay? And that's the one you want to be in on. And then you, you see these sustained swings uh, lower begin. Obviously, like most of everything I have, um, you know, we're not going to go through that whole long-winded depiction of uh, how orders are stacked and how dealers work within these key levels. But assuming that we had a support level and price started up here, much in the same capacity we saw on the uh, selling side, you could see that unfold on the bullish aspect of trading as well.